Hello and welcome back to the NK Zagreb save and it's me, Coljet Left Foot. But obviously you know that because you're tuning into my YouTube channel once again and thank you very much for doing that. We are playing Hajduk today. Uh, it's third v second, so quite a big game. We'll go through the schedule first. There's going to be one game in this episode. It was going to be uh, us and then Slav and Blupo, but the Slav and Blupo game has been postponed due to international call-ups. So it's just going to be one game in this episode and we'll talk a little bit around the finances reputation stuff like that i've had a few requests in the comments and twitter asking me to go through that so if there is anything you want to see just let me know if you put it in the comments i do read it i generally reply to every single comment i get as well so yeah do that or follow me on twitter at culturedf and we can have a conversation on twitter which is good fun we were last together somewhere um i think the plan was over here somewhere ish i'm sure of i think we did the, did we do the cup no i got knocked out of the cup off air i was going to come back for that and then i didn't um we were around here somewhere i think up and dynamo might have been the last episodes we drew 1-1 with slavin blue po bit annoying we absolutely battered them but couldn't score more than one goal varazadin were put to the sword 3-0 vinko politin getting a hat trick rudez 3-3 um, even Mamouk getting them. We then beat Sevesti in the cup, which was good. Got him through to the quarterfinals. Um, in fact, no we didn't. I'm an idiot. That was the previous episode. This was the last episode, wasn't it? Because we did the cup quarterfinal and lost. Three, it was 3-3. Three, three. We lost 3-3. Three, three. It was 3 all, and then we lost because... <sighs> I think Oprita missed his penalty. Um, and then we lost 2-1 to Istra as well after that. Moha scoring. They got the winner in the 94th minute, which was very, very annoying. But uh, And then we went into the winter period with the transfer window opening. And to be honest, not much not many transfers happening for us. But friendlies all went pretty well. We played lots of different players in all these friendlies. As you can see, like Hrubez getting a few runouts. Um, Iasov scored an own goal in this one against whoever they are, Koplovinka. Um Yeah, like Herrera. We're going to go through the mentoring as well because there was the, the first team, the first team squad is now huge and we're going to go into why. But uh, yeah, the friendlies went okay, lots of things, lots of fans coming out to watch us as well, which is the main thing, getting a bit of more money in the coffers. Um, we were going to come back straight after the window opened, but I thought, nah, let's plough on through. There's not too much to discuss. So, Slavo and Blupo, 1-1. We drew them. We lost 4-0 to Dynamo. Got absolutely hammered. Followed that up by beating Varazadin, 1-0. Tom Zerga getting the goal. Losing to Dynamo again, 1-0. Fernando Fonseca, we played them pretty close to each other in both in the league. Rude, we lost 1-0. Oh, sorry, we beat them 1-0. Prince getting an early goal, which was enough. Rijeka, we drew 1-1. We went 1-0 up through youngster Euro Dadic, and then Ocampo got a goal back. Tom Zerga picking up a bit of an injury, which is annoying. Lokomotiva, um, we beat them 4-1. Liber scored a penalty against us once on loan of Zagreb, and now he scored past them, is what the commentary said. And Frank Sonogo, who turned us down to move to Lokomotiv, got sent off, which was always good fun. Bamba got a goal, Mihakovic got two, and Alex Aikwa came on um, and got a goal as well, which was very, very nice. We then went into Osiek. We beat them 1-0. Michael Mert on the 32nd minute, giving us the win. And then we played Istra 1-0, and Ivan Mamut getting a goal. And Ivan Mamut has fallen out of my good books. He's having a very, very good season. But um, he's being a bit of a bell end about his new contract. His contract expires at the end of this season. And I want to drop him down to a backup because I think we're going to have Bamba as our starting target man next year. But uh, he doesn't want that. And he, he's just being a bit of a dick. So I don't know. I think there's better talk. I think if we get into Europe like we looks like we're going to do, I think we can get in a better target man than this guy. I think that's also quite harsh on my point because he's been very, very good for us in the first league. But I think if we can cash in and get a bit of money back, but I don't know, yeah. He's got, basically, we've got like three months to get him to sign a new deal as a backup player. If not, we'll just let him go on a free and, and get, we've already got Bamba in the club who's good enough to replace him. Um, so today we're going to be playing Hey Duke, but there is, I'll say there's no transfer news. There's, there's always a little bit of transfer news, isn't there? There always is with me. So if we go into the transfer history... Um, we got a few more people in on freeze. They're just constant people from America coming in. We had Christian Tu has joined us from our feeder, our parent club, um, Michelin. He looks very, very good. Doesn't play very well. Four games, 6.5. He was brought in by Brett Higgins on loan on deadline day. He doesn't really fit our system, and that's it's nothing really against him. Um, it's more Brett making a bit of a bad, bad decision. But we're only paying, I think, like 10% of his wages or something. So... 
it, he's a good option to have in the squad. And then uh, Vranic has also been brought in by Brett Higgins as a youngster, highly rated three star already, but nowhere near our first team. Tackling seven isn't the best as a centre back, but um, I'm happy to get him in. He looks like he's going to progress nicely. We've let a few more people go. Nikita Mukilic moved for a thousand pounds to um, HNK Gorica, where he is now listed for loan and not worth very much at all was nowhere near our first team happy to cash in and get a bit of money for him after he came through the youth system uh, other than that Lovro Rogic the goalkeeper never played he played what zero appearances for us and we managed to get a £10,000 profit on him which I'm delighted about because he was a moany little bitch so he's left the club um, and then Gogla Gisli Povardsen has gone to Luko on loan in the lower divisions but that should mean he gets quite ooh, gets quite a lot of game time um, and hopefully impresses. He made one game for us, got a 6.2. I still rate him quite highly. I think he's going to be pretty good, but we'll have to see how he develops. Other news in terms of transfers in the under-19s. Um, under-19s is now pretty big because we've had a youth intake day, which I'll cover as well in a minute. You will notice Stefano Akaka is down here. Um, I wanted him to move clubs. He didn't move clubs. I waited for his contract to get to the point where he could negotiate for free and then decided to do that. So... His five appearances, averaging 6.58, is all he's ever going to get in the Croatian leagues, and he's going back to Italy because he's a bit of a bell. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else. I think there might have been another arranged transfer as well, but it escapes my mind. If we sort by age, we can see... Oh, yeah, Bektasi's in here because he's just absolutely terrible. Oh, yeah, we're trying to get rid of Maldan Jertic. He's just being a dick as well. Um... Yeah, he probably should have got a bit more game time, but our defenders are playing really well. He's played one game, got a 6.7. I'm looking to see if we can get any sort of money for him, um, and that would be great because it's a profit because we bought him in on a free transfer. Right, now, on to the first team. This is the size of our first team squad, if we sort by position. Four goalkeepers, um, four to two right backs, uh, four people that can play centre back, four, three left backs, another right back there, another centre midfield, loads of centre midfielders, loads of right wingers, loads of strikers. However, you will notice if we go to the age of the squad, a lot of these are very, very young. This is because of mentoring. So if we go into training and go into mentoring, players can't be in a mentor group unless they're in the same squad. So we have our influential players in the hierarchy which is Rubez and Daniel Lonkar. Lonkar's a bit of a strange one because he's now been put on the transfer list but he still seems to be having an effect on all these players. And then we've gone for everybody who we've signed from America because we know they all speak the same language. So all of these guys are in here. None of them are having a big effect on anybody else. So all the effect will be coming from Rubez and Lonkar. And what we're going to try and get is Khrubar's determination will hopefully rub off on people. Um, and Lonkar, I think it was his leadership, I think, or determination leadership as well. So these guys that are in here that we've signed from America are pretty much all of them are four, if not five star potential players. So if we can get the determination to rub off on them and then that makes them more determined. So we're going to try and get these, if not become professional, to become fairly determined, a bit like Lonkar. That's the long term plan. And then the other one here, we've got Besiktas, uh, Besiktas, that's a football club in Turkey, Bektasi, uh, De Silva and Aesov training pretty much anybody else who's a youngster who isn't hasn't come and been signed from America and although it's quite complicated how to do it there is loads of good things to read on it and things like that if you want to my take on it is that you have all these people training in the first team they'll train better if we go and look at the individual scores for training you'll notice that if we search by the uh, sorted by the good people youngster 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 Michael Mertz, not a youngster. Youngster, not a youngster. Youngster, not a youngster. Youngster, 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 uh, youngster, youngster. So it's making their training much more beneficial. I mean, look at Humberto Herrera. Look at all those up arrows. It's absolutely incredible. And he's actually made now a couple of appearances because his training performance has been so good. He's made a couple of appearances for the first team. Not done brilliantly well. Came on as a sub at most times, but generally... He was doing really well in the reserves, getting 13 goals in 10 games. I thought he was due a go in the first team, and that's how it's going to work. If you train well, you if you train well with the first team and with the senior squad, you're going to get a run out, which has worked massively in the favour of this guy, Chris Laughlin or, or Laughlin, Laughlin probably. Who his stats aren't? I mean, his physicals are incredible for an 18-year-old, but his other stats aren't really good determination going up massively that's what we like to see 
However, he's played one game and got a 7.6. He was the second best player on the pitch behind Mamou, who scored for us. So he keeps his place, and he's keeping... Zerga got um, suspended, I think, or injured. Uh, so he he dropped out. Um, Loughlin came in, and Aikwe went onto the bench. And it just he, he played very, very well, so he's going to stay in the team, which is great. Um, Zeki Fryers wants to commit his future to us, but I'm not 100% sure, because... He's 31, he'll be 32 next year. He's going to want he's going to want a fair whack of money and we've got some good left backs coming through the youth system. So I think Zeki Fries this will be your last hurrah for Zagreb this season. I mean, he is playing very very well, but we'll see. We'll see what happens, see how it goes. Good news, Vinko Peritin has signed a contract extension. So he's now here for the rest of this season and next season. And what's really good about it is that hopefully we'll get him the C. That should have now gone up. That should be next. Oh, yeah, next season. Yeah, 2025. So we're just going to basically keep trying to do that because we don't ever have to pay anything for him. I'm not saying he's the best striker around, but at this level, he's very, very good. Eight goals in 24 games isn't brilliant, but he just. He puts. Enough, he gets loads of chances and puts enough of them away to, to win us games, which is the main thing of it. So that is why we have a massive squad at the moment. If they get loan offers, I do let them go out on loan. I don't keep them at the first team. I'd rather they play football, but I make sure they're listed as a key or a first team player when they go on loan. And then if they're not getting the right amount of football, I call them back and put them into the senior squad training. I am planning at the end of season this year to have a monumental clear out of anybody that I don't think is ever going to make it, whether they've got five star potential or not. If I don't think they're going to make it as a a potential first team player for us, we're going to look to sell them on. Um, probably half the time we'll have to do what we've done with uh, Parmasevich and loan him out with a mandatory fee to pay at the end of it, which hopefully they'll agree to. But you know we've got quite a good number of of really highly rated players now. If we look down, I think the lowest we've got are all the old people. So Runjay, I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, Kalisic, we will get rid of in the summer. Levac, we won't renew his contract after his youth contract. Stanchez. Might go, but then you're getting into the sort of like three and a half stars. We could easily be um, a team that just has, you know, four star or three and a half star is the minimum you have to have. Because look at all these players. I know a lot of them are out on loan at the moment, but literally all of these players are four star or potentially four star potential. That's a lot of youth players to have at four star. 16 year olds, 17 year olds, a few 19 year olds in there, but most people next year. A lot of them will be called up to the first team, and if they, if they're not good enough for the first team, they're over nineteen. They'll be shipped out the door because if you think we've got all of those youngsters as well, that doesn't include the youngsters that are in here, even though they're available for the under nineteens. I think, I think that is right because they don't have, um, yeah. So oh no, Makarov is in there. So okay, so it does include the people that I put in the senior squad and then made them available to play for the under nineteen. So. Yeah, that's how it's going. Uh, key performers this year. Uh, Laughlin obviously won game 7.6, but Ivan Mamut has been incredible, which I'm sort of... Well, uh, let me know down below. Do you think I should renew Mamut's contract? His stats aren't the best. His height, his heading, um, and his jumping reach. Basically, I think we could easily find someone with who's that tall with strength, jumping reach, and probably better heading, which is what we need, um, because his actual finishing isn't... He's okay with finishing 12, but 7 goals, 4 assists in 22 games, he's... He's actually got better every season we've had him as well, which is pretty incredible. Um, how old is he? He's 26, so we could get another few years out of him. But um, I think we've got a lot of options in the youth team already. And next season, other than Vico Perintin, we're going to try and cut down the number of loans that we've got here because we've got such a good squad um, that I think we don't really need to rely on loan transfers anymore. If Brett Higgins goes out and finds someone amazing on loan, then yeah, we'll look at him and we'll probably bring him in on Brett's recommendation. But uh, yeah, that's that's how we'll go. I mean, the two central midfielders have been great. Prince and Mert have been really good. De Silva's dropped off a little bit this year. Um, hasn't had as many games as he would you probably would have expected, but a 6.82. If you look, got to go all the way down here for a 6.7. Um, so really, our players are playing very, very well, which is always really good to say, um, to be honest. So I've been rambling for about 15 minutes-ish. So let's go and have a look and get into the game. We've slightly tweaked the tactic as well. We've still got our old tactic, which is a little bit more... Um, you need to be an advanced forward if we play this one. Um, which is, you know, we we build out from the back and we work it through midfield and we go like that way and keep working hard. 
but we've also now come up with one that still overlaps it lowers the tempo down a lot more we we're looking to hit earlier crosses because we've got target men and Pariten tries to get on the knockdown so expect it we're going to be using this in today's game it's a bit more attacking as well we're going to we struggle against the bigger teams. Dynamo, Hayduk, and Rieka, I think, are the only teams. And oh, we've had a freak loss to Istra as well. I think those three, though, are the main three teams we've actually lost to in recent years. So what we're going to actually try and do is we're going to try and attack them in today's game. We're going to go out there and try and attack Hayduk. We're away from home. We're going to try and take the game to them. So we press higher up. We press our strikers to go and press them higher up with a high line of engagement. We use the offside trap because Skender and Babok are pretty clever. To be honest, their football intelligence in the report, um, in their coaching report, seems to be quite high. We defend narrow to keep it tight. We counter and counter press, and we take short kicks from the goalkeeper to to build it up. But we're not afraid to then put it to the fullbacks and launch it up towards Bamba with an early cross as well. So that's how we're going to line up. Let's go into the game. The previews here. Oh, we've got new kits. I forgot to say that as well. This is something I really should have pointed out in the last episode. Um, and how also because we're only doing one game. And we've gone through mentoring and training, or not quite training, but mentoring and plans for the future and things like that. This is going to be a special Sunday supplement, so you're going to have a special Saturday episode and a special Sunday episode. Yeah. But I had a bit of time, so I thought you'd get an episode Saturday and Sunday. So don't get used to it, but hopefully it'll be a bit more common. I know that doesn't make sense. But yeah, let's go and play Hey Duke. Oh no, Kits, that's what I was talking about. Bloody hell, I'll, I'll get there eventually, won't I? Uh, club. We have two new kits. Thank you very much to FM Requester Kit. Um, a lovely home kit now and a lovely away kit as well. So, uh, Macron sponsored by Agricor, who are a local Croatian. And a Zagreb, Zagrebian. That's a, that, well, I'm going to make that word up for you. Uh, Zagrebian, that's what we're calling ourselves. Yeah, Agricor, brilliant. Um, we haven't got a third kit, so if anyone wants to do a very quick design for a green third kit, I've never seen us wear it. So the chances are you might not get it on live show, live, live game cam thing. But uh, yeah, who knows. Finances wise, before we get into the game, one last thing I want to talk about. We've still got a bit of money. We are losing quite a lot of money. So expenditure this month 182k, but we have had a bit of income. It's sort of tailed off. I think basically that transfer of uh Paritian for a million really, really helped us out. If we hadn't have had that, we would be really, really struggling. The new owners really aren't putting any money into the club like Mafia Man used to do, so I'd quite like Mafia Man to come back if you wanted to buy the club back. But um yeah, it's uh, it's it's going okay. If we have a quick look, uh, it's the club one I wanted. Is it the club one? General. How do I look at... I swear there's a finance screen around here somewhere. Home. Oh, finances, is it? So as you can see, this season we've actually made a loss of 1.148 million. So profit or loss. For tax purposes, our loss is 740k. Um, obviously that doesn't... That will be reduced when we get our prize money, which is going to be more than ever because we're likely going to finish in the top three hopefully maybe top four um but yeah and fourth place this year i don't think has a european spot i'm not too sure i can't figure it out i i'm sure it will because it's dynamo v zagreb uh, dynamo via via v hey duke in the cup final which probably means that one of their places will then drop down and go into fourth but according to the rules of the league but as you can see, we're doing very well. We've got a nine-point gap over third. We're four points behind Hey Duke, but we played them today. So if we win, we're only one point behind them. But if you look at the rules, it does say here, the top team qualifies for the European Championship Cup second qualifying phase. Team in second qualifies for the Euro Cup second qualifying phase. And team in third, nothing about fourth. But I do think that the cup team that wins the cup, which we should probably go and check, otherwise I could be in for a world of pain. If we, if we finish fourth and don't get Europe, I'm going to be well annoyed. Uh, winner qualifies for the Euro Cup. Uh, exclu exclusions. Kakovec are ineligible. So if they ever won the Cup, they can't qualify for Europe. How interesting. If someone wants to find out why, that would be really helpful. Because I like to learn stuff like that. So it's likely that, yeah, because like, Heyduk and Dynamo are playing each other in the final. So, so one place will drop down to fourth. So top four should get European football. We should be finishing in the top four. Let's get into the game now that I've rambled enough. We've picked the team. Um, we'll go through it just in the intro page, this bit here. So, Politin and Bamba up front, Mihakovic and Loughlin come in at right wing. Uh, Tumasi, Skender, Babok, Friars, Mert and De Silva make up the back, sort of six players. And then Aesov keeps his place in goal. Franitovic is in goal again. Balleredi, Vukur, Bukama, Salamni, Barry still there, Lucas, Castrati, Clapham, Saltido and Baku up front. Now we know Saltido is dangerous we're going to tightly mark him straight from the off so that he doesn't get any of those long ranges off that we like to see um i'm gonna say avenge because obviously that's always the best thing to say if it's there and then assertively 
just go out there. We've got faith. I've got faith that everybody can step it up. Um, set up position instructions. Saltino, tightly mark always. Tackle him really hard as well. Try and get him injured. Um, let's tightly mark the striker and see how that works out as well. Into the tunnel we go. Uh, we finished 3-3. Three, three. Um, let's play down our chances a bit and see. Hopefully that doesn't affect the players. Straight from the off, we're going to shout at them and get creative. We're in the red, left to right. They're in the white going from right to left in this first half. They have a magnificent stadium, which is nowhere near sold out. But, uh, yeah, something else to quickly comment on while the game carries on in the background is... Um, how good our attendances have been this year. We've had one complete sellout where we had 8,000 people come and watch us and that was against Dynamo at our ground. Um, however, our new stadium, it hasn't been an official announcement, but they're looking for um, a site to build the new stadium and, and like seeing if they can find a site to build it. And it's only going to hold, I think, 4,300 people, but it's all going to be seated. So... I think they're sort of planning ahead for European football because obviously you can't have standing allocation in football, uh, in European football. So I think that's what they're planning for. But we've got quite a long highlight here. Aiso goes long, and that's a pretty poor pass. Vukur wins the header into Clapan, out to Castrati. Castrati on the right hand side, ball across, and that's a good header, sort of away. Barry turns, and his shot goes past the post. And uh, I do have the first real effort of the game of note. And, uh, yeah, we've, we've been playing, well, as the league table suggests, we've been playing pretty well. To only lose five games at this point in the season is really, really good. As uh, De Silva gives it back to Tumasi, back to De Silva again, out to Bamba, who's pulled out a bit wide, puts a cross in, falls to Miyakovic, who can't really do anything with that. And Ballaredi looks to get it away. Now, we have also agreed a future transfer for a new striker who's going to be likely to be competing with Vinko Politin. Um, and it's someone who I remember from my NK Maribor days who actually played for Olympia Ljubljana called Zan Medved and or Medved. And he's actually, in real life, I think he's rated quite highly. Bamba does really well to intercept that. Looks to put in Paritin. Paritin's through on goal and his finishing eight means he went for a chip and really bogged it, bogged it up, buggered it up. And um, to quote people saying that I say it a lot, that was absolutely crap. <laughs> But yeah, we're still coming forward here though. Mihakovic really jumps around his man quite well. He's got Bamba in front of him, lays it out right to Loughlin, the American, out to Tumasi. Tumasi puts it back into Loughlin, squares it, Mertz there, it's blocked. Bamba, Mert, and it's bouncing around and we can't put it in the back of the net. And Tumasi keeps it alive. But yeah, so we've arranged a transfer for Medved. He's going to come in as a backup or rotation player. And I don't know, it's, it's a free, risk-free transfer. He comes with a pretty decent reputation, some good stats, good all-round stats. I think he could potentially be better than Paritin up front because of his finish, his improved finishing or increased finishing compared to Paritin. But uh, we'll have to wait and see for next season as it comes out to Barry here. Barry lays it out to Saltido, gets a shot off and goes over the bar. Now that's why we should be marking him tightly so he can't get many of those shots off from range. Saltido cuts it back to Castellati. Castellati shoots, it's blocks. Now who can get there first? Castellati does pick it up. He keeps it alive, goes left looking for Johnny Lucas who can't get there. It goes out of play for a throw-in. And uh, let's just ask him to get creative again. Salman into Lucas. Oh, I thought that was going to be a foul, as you could tell from my voice. As Clapan gets around his man, shoots, and that is smashed the crossbar. And Aesop didn't even move. And Zagreb are slowly having their dominance. However, no shots on target. So I'd say we're forcing them to shoot from strange angles or long range, and that is totally fine by me. As Bamba comes forward, gets around the tackle, up to De Silva. De Silva into Mert. Mert has got the run of Loughlin. Loughlin's in for his first goal for the club. No, it's blocked. Bamba! Oh, my word. It was blocked and went over the bar. Oh, unbelievable. Paritin puts the cross in and it's headed away by Clapan. And Barry will look to bring this away. And I would argue we've now had the best chance of the game and didn't make the most of it as Barry's cross is blocked. But, yeah... Also, if you're wondering why I have a pen in every video, it's because I do make notes during games and what I have thoughts about for mentoring and training and things like that. Because training, I generally leave to the assistant manager or I leave it on the default stuff and then I change things as we go. So I've started to now do, um, when we have more games, more than one game a week, I now do like a really intense Monday session where we have all three things totally full and then give them basically the whole day off before the game. Um, and it seems to be it seems to be working a little bit. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm pleased, and then again we're going to go for the assertive. There's a lot more. I think we can go out there because I think we, I think we have been playing well. I mean, the amount of times I look up here and it's always like, oh, thumb up for Zeki Fryers for running this far and everything like that. But 
We'll get out there. We'll keep it as it is at the moment. Nothing too much to be concerned about. Nobody's picked up any silly yellow cards or um, looks to be aggressive or anything like that. So as they play it out to Saltito straight away. I, I will say, I know like Tumasi got quite a lot of love in the comments when I bought him and he has been absolutely superb. Right back is a place where we are absolutely stacked with young talent and that is why Longcar is getting annoyed that he's not getting first team football and will more than likely be sold as Laughlin's back there doing good defensive work as well which is good. Nice to see an American um, putting effort in, in coming to a, a league that you don't really hear about Americans moving to generally. Peritin though uses his pace, gets in behind, it's that finishing again. Ah. Oh. That's his problem. It's just that final, final finish. He's like the complete opposite of, I don't know, like Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, who would have a, a minimal aspect in the build-up to a goal and then be there to, with a great finish to finish it off. Whereas Peritin is more than happy to get in the build-up. Bam, but he's got to square it. He does square it. Mihakovic with a header and it's lame and Frantovic is there. But yeah, Peritin will help the build-up and then be really crap in the finish. Um, it's just unfortunate for us. We don't really have anyone to replace him. I could bring on Humberto Herrera, who's the youngster. Not really performed too well, but has got good finishing and could probably take a chance if if it came his way, which is something we'll have to get. Look at this. Saltino, I'm going to say that's the that's the tight mark in 6.3. And as I said, if he doesn't play well, they don't play well generally. Tumasi will take him off hard tackling because he is marking Saltino. Um, do I take a risk and put a youngster on Humberto Oh, he's brought that down. Herrera. As it goes to Barry, shoots. Tumasi gets it away, and Barry can't bring the ball down in the second attempt. Just get creative seems to be a shout that works very well for this team. And I realise I'm talking a lot, but this is because it's a it's quite a nervous game, I'd say, playing playing Hey Duke, because this could there's quite a lot riding this. I could put Bamber as an advance forward. No, I'm gonna let's get the youngster a go. Why not? Let's give him a go. Uh, we'll put him as what he wants to play as, which is a poacher. He should just be hanging on the shoulder of the last defender. Um, look at this, Laughlin again, 7.5. He could be our starting right winger by the end of the season. If Zerga doesn't, if he doesn't get injured, Zerga won't have another chance if he keeps his performances up because he has been absolutely brilliant. Promising striker Humberto Herrera comes on, and we're going to keep going as it is. Their 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 managers also shouting stuff at them. Um, and we're going, oh, yes, something else that's just crossed my mind. Whilst we're 10 minutes to go or 5 minutes to go, I should probably think about making a few more subs as well. Right, Mamut is going to come on. So we've got fresh legs up front all round. 6.9, good game from Bamba. Um, we're going to be on Dadic for Mihakovic. Let's go all attacking substitutions to see if we can make a difference. I am also applying for international jobs. Now, this isn't going to be anything to do with a save unless you guys want to see it as a sort of separate mini-series if we ever qualify for a big competition or anything. Um, but what that is to do is to build my manager reputation up so that we can sign better players and better players sort of know who we are. But there we go. Nil-nil away at Hey Duke. I will take that. I will very much take that. I think we've played very, very well. Um, and I'm going to... I'm going to tell them that. I'm going to passionately tell them that. I think that's a great result. And this could potentially be a long episode. I'm not very sure. But yeah, we still have that four-point gap. We have a ten-point gap over Osiak now. You should be third place pretty sewn up and pretty good, pretty happy. Dynamo look like they're running away with the league yet again, which is really annoying. But uh, that's who we've got to beat. We've got to go and beat our Zagreb rivals to get to the top of the table. And it's not going to be easy. Uh, Relegation-wise, Varavaza didn't look like they're going to be cut adrift pretty badly with their minus 35 goal difference and a 15 points after 26 games. And then it's between Istra and Lokomotiva to see who's probably going to be in the relegation playoff. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Goalless Parisian worries Zagreb. No, he doesn't. He doesn't worry me. Um, I know his finishing is pretty crap, so that doesn't really matter. We've got another uh, unbeaten streak going on. Uh, lots of well, not lots of draws. Three draws, three wins. So we'll have to see how that goes. But uh, yeah, it's going all right. Chances are now I'm going to accelerate through to the end of the season because there's really not going to be much happening in there. So it'll be either Istro and Balupo, or we'll just come back for the Balupo game and go from there. Last thing to show you then, this is the guy Zan Medved that we're bringing in on a free transfer. Um, do, do, do. Again, all loads of Americans and youngsters coming in, which is good. I like the steady stream of people doing that. So, uh, Marco Mitrovic is leaving us to join Olympia, and we are signing Zan Medved. I think it's Medved, but I think he just looks quite useful, all rounder. Pretty tall, six foot one. Um, pace and acceleration is okay. Jumping reach is pretty good. Finishing, dribbling, uh, passing's all right. Decisions there. Determination will hopefully go up when we put him in one of our mentoring groups, but. 
overall, I'm quite excited about him coming in on a free transfer. I think it'll be a good bit of good bit of purchase. You see, he scored a few goals down in the second league in Slovenia. Hasn't been given a chance at um, Olympia Lyonne. A uh, Lyonne? No, Olympia Ljubljana. So. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Let me know down below what you think about that. Um, and I'm sorry that Stefan Lukaku didn't work out, but he was really, really, really bad. Even as a target man, he was really, really, really bad. Um, yeah, so he's going to sod off, unfortunately. But um, yeah, there we go. I think that is it. When I say I'm applying for international jobs, I will show you what I mean. We're sort of, there's no jobs available at the moment. And I'm hoping to keep it in Europe because that's more entire of what we're doing in this save. Um, but we're looking at sort of like, you know, two and a half star teams when they become available. So not your big, massive uh, teams that are going to be involved in the World Cup and the Euros every single competition. But a team that we might be able to build up and then go to another team who are in a European or international competition. But... Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Let me know what you think about that idea. If it's really rubbish and you guys really just want me to focus on Zagreb, then I won't become an international manager. But as I said, in theory, it shouldn't mess with the game. It'll just give me something else to do um, off camera, a bit much more to do off camera. But uh, yeah, or I can inter I can put it in there and we can make it an international and, and Zagreb save and we can sort of have a little mini series coming off the side. Obviously, that's... A bit more work for me, but if that's got all you guys want to see, I really don't mind. Um, thank you very much. Let's go to the outro screen, because that's the sensible thing to do right now. Thank you very much to all the patrons. Look at this, I've got it the right way around this time. To all the patrons for the extra support they give the channel. If you want to be our... What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six. So if you want to be our twelfth Patreon, that would be very much welcome. The description is in the... Uh, no, the, the link is in the description below, is what I was trying to say. Cultural Effort Merchandise, link in the description. My Twitter, link in the description. Patreon link in the description. And a link to this database if you want to play this game yourself and open up the Croatian 3rd Divisions uh, for you to play is in the description on the Steam Workshop as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the bonus Saturday and Sunday episodes. But for now, I'm out. Cheers. <laughs>